The unenviable task of being the one that came after. In this case, it's the one that came after Innocence. At some point, we'll be covering the one that came after Hush, the one that came after The Body, and to a lesser degree, the one that came after every season finale. Though in fairness, season openers are hard. After the narrative and emotional bombshell that was Innocence, Phases is a return to early season 2 or even late season 1 form with a plastic monster of the week, high school hijinks, and a big bad lurking in the wings to remind us he's still there. Problem is, I just wasn't ready yet for Angel to take up that role vacated by Spike and the Master. It felt a little cheap. I was still grieving, damn it. Whatever stage of grief that is where you're shame-gorging on gummy bears while watching YouTube videos of Buffy and Angel set to an Adele song. Phases opens with a phenomenal throwback moment to Witch, as Oz notices the eyes of the cheerleader trophy following him wherever he goes. After a short awkward talk with Willow, Oz runs into Larry, the stock high school character from Halloween who has douche dialed up to 11. That's great, Larry. You've really mastered the single entendre. Larry asks Oz how far he's gotten with Willow, and in a nice cut, Willow tells Buffy they've gotten nowhere. In an unusually insensitive and slightly unbelievable flub, Willow forgets the soul-crushing events of the previous episode. I don't want to be the only girl in school without a real boyfriend? Xander and Cordy are making out in their car when they get attacked by a hairy monster. In gym class the next day, Larry has a fresh wound on his arm from a dog that bit him. Oz quips, I've been there, man. My cousin Jordy just got his grown-up teeth in. It's not like to be tickled. Self-defense class then begins and sexual harassment Larry is in a group with Buffy. Willow reminds her, you're supposed to be a meek little girly girl like the rest of us. Really? Since when? In Halloween, Buffy already threw this guy into a vending machine. So Buffy feigns wimpiness, and Larry takes advantage. Oh, Summers, you are true. All right. There are a few elements in this episode that just don't play right for me. Larry is the first. Yes, I understand the joke his persona is setting up for later in the episode. But the writers have him dialed up so high, it's like watching a cartoon. Oh, thank you, Thigh Master! <laughs> Buffy and Giles go werewolf hunting and stumble on the misogynist MacGuffin werewolf hunter, Kane. Problem number two for this episode. All right, so leaping ahead a bit, Kane exists solely to create a problem for our characters to solve by the end of the episode. Can they get to Oz before Kane does? It's just lazy writing. He's a chicken nugget in a steakhouse. There were so many juicy opportunities for drama here without tossing this guy in. Oz is a werewolf now. He's Bruce Banner in the Hulk, which comes with automatic opportunities for drama that, unlike our one-dimensional werewolf hunter, grow a significant character in the show. They do a little bit of that, but why not simply have Oz on a rampage? Can Buffy get to Oz in time before he does something that can't be undone? Instead we get... And then you, well, you're a girl. Teresa, the object of Larry's earlier desire, is walking home from class and runs into Angelus, who walks her home. At the bronze, Cordy and Willow are commiserating over Xander's level of distraction and Oz's lack of touchy-feeliness. It's another scene that doesn't work for me, given the thing that Xander is distracted about is Willow, and in a scene earlier with Buffy, Willow called Cordelia a skanky hoe. Would these two really be sharing with each other? Really? The werewolf apparently agrees with me because he jumps in to end their conversation. Everyone flees, Buffy tries to capture the puppy and fails, and Kane shows up to remind Buffy she's a girly girl. And how could she think she could girl the werewolf with all that girly girl she's girling? You're a girl. Buffy and Giles hear on the radio the werewolf has killed a female student. Oz wakes up in the forest naked and has a sneaking suspicion he's the werewolf. He calls his aunt, mother to Jordy, his cousin he mentioned in gym class earlier, and it turns out, yep, little Jordy is a werewolf. What a wonderful detail this was. Perhaps the only bit of subtlety in the entire episode. The gang tries to figure out who the werewolf is, and Xander decides it's Larry. Xander goes to confront Larry, and we get the joke. How are people going to look at me after they find out I'm gay? It's not a terrible scene. I just think Larry's one-dimensional behavior earlier in the episode isn't worth this payoff. Also, a lot of the jokey werewolf bait and switch is lost on us, the audience, because we already know that Oz is the werewolf, not Larry. Buffy suspects Teresa's death may not be werewolf-related and goes to investigate. Teresa wakes up and passes a message on from Angel before Buffy stakes her. Back at Oz's place, Oz is locking himself up with chains he apparently bought at an antique shop. I was struck by how conspicuously absent Sunnydale parents are again. Oz is locking himself up in the family living room, and no one is going to be around while he's all wolfed out? Willow confronts Oz about his oddly aloof behavior and notices the chains before Oz changes. Buffy and Giles pursue Oz into the forest 
forest and Willow tranks Oz just in time. Buffy ruins Kane's gun and sends him on his way. At school the next day, Willow and Oz have a very Willow and Oz conversation and decide they want to go on with things. I'd still if you'd still. I'd still. I'd very still. Yeah, alright, fine, I'd still too. It's not that any of this is without merit. The Canes and the Larrys of this episode do serve a purpose, Larrys being slightly more interesting. There are many phases going on. Oz is in his werewolf phase. Willow mentions her three days a month phase. Larry is in his closet phase, and Angel even mentions in the last episode a phase of his own. No more of this, I've got a soul crap. <laughs> what can I say? Hmm? going through phase. All of them are sexually related, in keeping with the season's themes. The wolf himself is said to be attracted to sex. As a symbol for sexual desire, then, there's a reading here in which Buffy's choice to capture the wolf rather than kill or become one indicates a newfound ability to control and take responsibility for her own sexual desires. It's slightly refreshing given how doom and gloom the season has been about sex in general. So yeah, I get it. And I don't dislike the episode. Problem is, I think it's a case where being a slave to the message detracted from the storytelling. So so many details felt flat to me. Larry's douchiness, Kane's cliché sexism. You're a girl. Willow calling Cordelia a skanky hoe and then commiserating with her about men. I respect that the episode sits in a long shadow, but for me there are only a handful of good lines and a couple of redeeming scenes. What was left after that couldn't hold it all together. 